I'm sure many people scratched their heads when they heard the news. I was leaving a prestigious church with a prestigious salary of $5,000 a year, which today would be the equivalent of over $170,000. That was a lot for any man, let alone a preacher. But God called me to serve people, neglected people, not money. In 1881, with only 14 people, we organized the Gospel Tabernacle on 44th Street near 8th Avenue. We supported ourselves with free will offerings. There were no pew rentals, no admission charges of any kind. And by 1900, we grew to over 1,400 people. In order to train prospective missionaries, we formed the New York Missionary Training Institute in 1882. We began informal classes in order to reach the neglected peoples of the world. What people don't realize, my friends, is that we broke down racial barriers. We welcomed immigrants, African Americans, in our meetings less than, less than one decade after the Civil War. That was unheard of even training them to serve as missionaries in our college. By 1883, a formal program was in place to train ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ and missionaries in a multicultural context. Several years later, the school was moved out of New York City to the Green Hills of Nyack, New York. It eventually became Nyack Missionary College, which is now Nyack College. And our facility in New York City became the hub of our on-the-job training center. It was a proud day in 1884 when the first graduates of our Missionary Training Institute set sail for Africa. Sadly, within 12 months, there were five missionary tombstones erected in the Congo. It was discouraging, yes, but not crushing to my vision to train and send missionaries, workers, into a ripened harvest field. In 1887, in response to a growing fervor for missionary service and support, we formed two societies, the Christian Alliance and the Evangelical Missionary Alliance. The first continued to serve the needs of peoples in America in our rescue missions, while the second began to focus on attention, their attention on our worldwide missions effort. After 10 years of working side by side by side, these two societies united into one, and the Christian and Missionary Alliance was born. Initially, my friends, these two societies were not founded as or intended to be denominations, but rather as organized movements of world evangelism. In my days, these societies were composed of Presbyterians, Baptists, Methodists, Episcopalians, Pentecostals, Holiness Churches, and many others. There was no competition, none. What united us was the necessity of Christ's mission. 
through my special emphasis in ministry, my absolute Christ-centeredness in doctrine and experience, we preached the, a unique gospel of Jesus. It was the fourfold gospel. Reverend Haggerty pointed to it before. Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Sanctifier, our Healer, and coming King, as depicted in our logo. Without apology, it was my heart for world evangelism that began the driving force behind the creation of the Christian and Missionary Alliance. I realized that in order to complete the Great Commission, it would require the mobilization of every fully devoted disciple of Jesus to reach the unreached and unchurched by every means possible. It was my firm conviction that the evangelization of the unreached and the unoccupied fields in the world, primarily India, Africa, China, and Palestine, would hasten the return of Christ. It makes sense today that the CNMA plays a leadership role in the carrying out of the Great Commission. We are in 60 plus countries, 60 around the world, with a missionary force of over 850 workers, not to mention the thousands more influenced by the CNMA who serve in mission agencies throughout the globe. Workers chosen by God, faithful workers, dedicated for life, obedient to death, and filled with the power of Christ's spirit, holding forth the word of light, and teamed together with one great cause to push back the darkness and usher in the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. Say amen. Thank you. And they're all supported by good and generous folks like you. When I established our first missionary convention in 1891 and took our first missionary pledge, we had deployed over 300 missionaries. The people of the Alliance, dedicated $92,000 to the Lord's work. By 1900, we had raised over $760,000 to support worldwide evangelism. In the year 2012, that is equivalent to $26 million. Pushing back darkness, shining light. That is our challenge. It is our calling. It is a powerful vision that can only be carried out forth as dedicated hearts join forces with the omnipotent spirit of Jesus Christ. It can be a broad in scope, yet strategic to every human heart. I believe Christ's return will be wonderful and will be hastened by a great missionary advance to the most neglected regions of the world. On one occasion, a news agent of the New York Times came out to one of my meetings where I was preaching on the eminent return of our Lord Jesus Christ. After the meeting, he asked me personally, in a way that they only can do, if I could tell exactly when Christ would return. I said, yes, I will tell you exactly when he will return if you promise to print what I tell you word for word. He agreed. I quoted.
quoted to him Jesus' own words. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Matthew 14, 28. He was obligated to print in the published paper those exact words. I'm not sure if the New York Times has said anything correct since then, but <laughs> that time they got it right. The anticipation of Christ's return is what drives us. It's the return of Christ will take out of life all that is sad and wretched today. It will take the vision of Jesus, which we have seen, and it will make it so real to us. It will bring us to his arms forever when we shall see him as he is. God has called us in the alliance, not to a thousand minor points of testimony, but to stand for certain great essentials, principles, and aims. The fullness of Jesus, the evangelization of the world, and the hastening of his coming. Surely, surely, this is sufficient to enable us to keep rank and to be of one heart and to make Jesus king as we ever labor together with Jesus to push back the darkness and shine forth light. For with only Jesus and with Jesus only can the darkness be made to dissipate. Let me pray for you. Dear Jesus, our Father in heaven, thank you, thank you for the call you placed on our lives to take the gospel message into all the land, into all the neglected areas of the world. Help us, Lord to never lose sight of that which was important to you. People and their need for salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. And Dr. Simpson, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Haggerty. Did you appreciate that? Thank you, Reverend Haggerty. <laughs>